I want to cut a gemstone into a d20, but my first attempt didn't go quite right, it came out more of a d21. I got a couple of comments suggesting I should try a laser garnet for my next attempt, and that seemed like a great idea. These pieces are alright, but what if I push the cut kit to its absolute limit and see what a $500 setup can really do? This is a terrible idea, but sometimes you just have to let the intrusive thoughts win. Now, let's get it on the dop and start cutting. Even with a stone this big, roughing in the facets went really smoothly. This little machine has some muscle, first to 260 and then 600 grit. But this was not going to be an easy time, and pre-polish is where all the trouble started. The first tier was actually really easy, but the second tier is where it all went wrong. When a facet gets too big, you suddenly run into some new and exciting problems. Apparently the ground-up garnet starts building up and causes trouble on the other side of the facet. My 8000 grit pre-polish just wasn't aggressive enough to get through the scratches and fog. When I tried 3000 grit, I was surprised by this incredible glow. You can really see exactly where the stone is contacting the lap, and how pressure on the stone affects how it polishes. Unfortunately, this also resulted in a terrible finish, so I was back to square one. I recut the tier several times, and each time I did, the die got a little smaller. Eventually, I realized I needed to reverse the direction of spin on the lap to hit the other side of the facet. That helped a lot, but I still kept getting these occasional gouges, and at some point, I just had to leave a couple in to get this thing done. Polishing went a bit better, but it was very slow. These facets are big and not perfectly flat, so I had to do a bunch of fine adjustments to hit every part of the facet. This took a lot of time, and unfortunately, I got impatient and let the stone get too hot. Amazingly, the stone fit in my transfer jig, but the die had shifted in the wax, and I couldn't actually transfer that way. Fortunately, the end of the die is pointy, and it does want to sit flush in a cone dop, so I could transfer it freehand, and with a little tweaking, it came out pretty good. I got the stone aligned using this reference facet, and then I was ready to start cutting the second half. This part was really nerve-wracking, because if I overcut one facet too much, I could ruin the whole thing. As I was cutting it in, I could tell the alignment was just a little bit off, but it came in very close. Everything was going well, but this stone had one more surprise for me. When I started pre-polish, an entire side of this facet sheared off and wrecked itself. I have no idea why it did this, and I was super nervous cutting it at 600, but in the end, it wasn't too bad. A couple of hours of polishing later, and it was as ready as it was going to be. Now, let's get it off the dop and see what we've got. You know, it has some issues, but it came out really beautiful. This material is gorgeous, color changing from yellow to orange, and long wave UV makes it glow a vivid pink red. And the final weight was 257 carats. It feels really heavy in the hand, and it actually takes some force to roll it. And even though I don't have a sandblaster yet, there are some advantages to dry erase. I'll definitely cut another D20, but probably just a bit smaller next time. If you have some cool ideas for dice, leave them in the comments. I've got a selection of really cool lab-created gems up at my site, turtleshoard.com. And if you'd like to try fasting yourself, you can learn more about the cut kit at facet.ing.